Hello everyone! Today I am going to start renovating the stairwells of my house. The main thing that I wanted to fix about this place is that it's really dark. There's only one light over there and a small window over here. And if I switch everything off, you'll be able to see how dark it is. Like, it's really, it's really dark. The first job I wanted to get done was moving the light outlet from the wall to the roof. This was the job that scared me the most because it involved electricity. And I've done a few small electrical jobs over the years but I'm still a long road away from feeling comfortable handling cables. But oh well, the only way to learn is to try. With precautions, please do not electrocute yourself, especially if you live alone in the mountains. After switching off the power, I removed the light fixture and started interrogating the cables about their origin. This is not what I was expecting. <laughs> I got no clue. I didn't want to just add a link and add some new cables, although that would have been much faster, but I wanted to substitute the current cables with longer ones so I could run them through the wall and up the roof. Okay, what should I do? What should I do? Should I pull you through? That's what should I do? If you're wondering how I had light so you could see, I used my portable battery, which is such a lifesaver in those situations. After a few frustrating attempts, I found the starting point on the other side of the wall in the bedroom, exactly in the opposite place of where I thought it would be. I got you, little buggers. After placing the new longer cables, I connected the light bulb just to make sure everything worked okay. Let's see if this works. <laughs> it works! It was then time to fix the cables to the wall using self-adhesive cable cutters. This part, I'll admit, was fairly fun since it did require me to Google questions every two minutes, which is absolutely not what I did for the rest of the electrical work. Once the cables were run, it was time to start on the light fixture, which I don't think I mentioned, it's actually a ladder. I started by cutting a bit of its feet off, otherwise I would have banged my head on every time I went down the stairs. And then I added two eyelets at each end and fixed a sturdy chain to one side of the eyelets. I then fixed two loop anchors to the roof, passed the chain through them and fixed the chain to the second eyelet. It was then time to wire the rope chandelier. I bought this kit online and I know it would have been fairly easy to DIY with some rope and cables, but honestly the project was already overwhelming as it was and sometimes you gotta take shortcuts. I attached the cables, fixed the metal fixture, wrapped the ropes and finally added the light bulbs. I had this idea of renovating the stairwell since I bought the house. I had lots of cool ideas on how to improve the space, but they were all scattered around my head. And I find this happens a lot. I get an idea, I start looking for inspiration online, and then I get so overwhelmed by the possibilities, freeze and never get started on the project. The thing that's truly helping me organizing my thoughts is Milanote, who is also sponsoring this video. Milanote is a powerful tool for organizing your creative projects. It allows you to gather notes, images, to-do lists and more all in one place. You might remember me using it this fall to help me deciding which bulbs to plant in my garden and to generally concretize the vision I had for the patch. For this project, I used Milanote to first draw what my vision was for the space. I then created different boards to collect inspirations I found online for wallpaper, the still lighting, the cladding and the wall frames. I made a list of the materials needed and I made a to-do list to help break down the project into manageable smaller tasks. What I love about Milnote is that you don't need to waste time downloading images to your laptop and then re-upload them. You can save images and links directly to the boards from any website using the Milnote Web Clipper. 
Milanote is great for visual thinkers and it's super easy and intuitive to use. You can choose from over a hundred built-in templates available for every type of creative projects, whether it's for your business, studies or personal life. When you're ready to share your work, you can invite your colleagues and clients to gather important feedback and collaborate with them in real time. The best thing about this app is that it is free for no time limit. So free up your brain to leave space for creativity and leave Milanote do all the hard work. Sign up using the link in the description below and let me know for which creative project you'll be using it. The second thing I decided to do was add some wallpaper to the front wall to make it more interesting. I never applied wallpaper so I was super nervous because the roll I bought was exactly the measurements I needed so I could not mess anything up. After cleaning the wall and filling in any gaps, I applied a coat of primer. I read that this would avoid the wall absorbing all the glue and assure an even adherence of the wallpaper. I then prepared the glue, coated the three wallpaper pieces and folded them in a concertino style. I started working on the central strip, trying to keep it as straight as possible, which was not an easy task. I used a plastic scraper to flatten the paper, but if I was to do it again, I would definitely try and use a brush instead, because the scraper did rip my paper in a few places. I then applied the two external sides of the wallpaper and it was really frustrating. They say that if you never applied wallpaper, you should avoid patterns. I did not listen and I paid for it. Luckily, the glue did allow me to remove the paper and replace it, but the wall was so tall that it was really hard to perfectly align the pattern. Overall, I think I did a fairly good job. You can notice the imperfections only if you look very close, so if you ever visit my house, please don't do that. It was then time to start working on the cladding, the most time-consuming and expensive part of the project. I started by removing the old skirting boards and then marking the slope. I decided to lay the cladding horizontally because I just like to make my life difficult. Laying it vertically would have been much faster and easier, but I just prefer the look of horizontal lines. I prepared the skeleton for the cladding by fixing 1cm thick patterns to the wall. This way, air is able to circulate between the wall and the wood, so it avoids mold formation, and it also decreases the amount of holes you need to make in the wall. I then varnish the cladding, both backs and front, and truly I don't know if it's necessary to varnish the back of the wood, but I thought this way it would perhaps last longer. I cut the cladding using a miter saw for the straight cuts and also a jigsaw to mold the pieces around the stair edge and to give them the right slope. I worked my way up painfully slowly with the help of podcasts and hot tea. A lot of hot tea. I then added trimming to the edges of the wallpaper to give it a neat look and also I cut so many small pieces um, to add to the bottom edge of the cladding since it was looking pretty rough. To fix the trims I used silicone glue which was okay and to finish off I added the corner trims to the top of the cladding and finally used wood fillers to fill in all the joints. The wood filler is a little bit too light in color for the bottom trims but again if you come around don't look too close and you'll be fine. I 
I collected frames and art for the past two years and I was so excited about putting them up. I cut all the shapes of the different frames with some cardboard so I could work on a layout without having to add nails to the wall. After figuring out a layout that worked with the cardboard pieces and painter's tape, I started fixing the frames up. I then added my favorite piece by Steve Sanderson on the wallpaper wall and it looks so good! As a finishing touch, I added some fake plants to the ladder light. I would of course would prefer having real plants, however there's just not enough light for them to grow. The project is complete and I am so happy with how it turned out, it looks like a different space. Very really proud of myself on this one, I must say, pat pat on the back. And if you would like to know the materials that I used, links to the products and the budget as well, you can go ahead and check the Mila note board, I will leave it in the description bar, so you can also create a free account if you would like to give it a go and see if it helps in your creative projects. Um, do you want to see the new foster? <laughs> This is Argo, he's seven and a half months old. He did get here with his sister, but his sister already found home. So you might see more of him in the future videos. Bye-bye, <laughs> say bye-bye.